Hey kids, it's Mrs. Davis from Happy Place to Grow. I am so glad you are joining me once again. It was so fun reading the story the night before Christmas with you. And it also got me inspired to do some Christmas time art. I was thinking about the page in the story that said, the children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. That got me to thinking about what I'm dreaming of, and I'd like you to be thinking about what you're dreaming of, and let's put those dreaming wishes into an art project that's just right for Christmas time. Now, this is gonna be a simple art project. You don't need a lot. You definitely need some white paper. We're gonna be going like a tall tower when we draw today. And you need a circle shape. Now, this is a circle shape I made years ago, but I traced it from the lid of a coffee container. So find a coffee container at your house, see if your parents can grab one for you, or find a shape that would make a good face. It should be, this is gonna be our head, so when I fit it on the paper, it's going to take a lot of the paper. This is gonna be a portrait. A portrait is a picture that just shows your head and shoulders, that view. It's not gonna be a lot of details. This is gonna be fun and easy. You're going to also need your crayons. I've got my special box that has lots of different facial colors. So grab your crayons. You need your scissors and your white glue. You definitely need your pencil because if you make a mistake and kiss a snake, and I would grab a black marker too. I like to outline and trace. And then something special, mine fell on the floor. You're gonna need some yarn. The yarn has to match your hair color. So if you're blondie, you can go and get some yellow yarn. If you have a uh, brown hair or light brown, I've got this light brown, uh, whatever hair color. Um, I used to do this project with my students. They always made their wish and I had all colors, black, brown, yellow, red, and then we even mixed it up if you had multiple hair colors. The kids got really creative. So go gather those items. You may have to run to Walmart or go online and order your yarn. So you could start this project and then add in, this is gonna be our hair. You can add in the hair later. So go get your things and meet me right back here. I'll be waiting and dreaming. All right, kids, hopefully you were able to gather most of your supplies. This is gonna be an easy one. We're gonna start here with our clean white paper and our tracer. You want it to be close to the top of the paper. Now I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna trace, I'm holding that circle. It needs to be in the middle of the paper. I have to kind of undo a little bit because the clipboard is in my way. So you're going to trace on your circle shape and then underneath your chin, we're gonna call this your chin area. We're gonna be coming right up under there and we're going to make a curved line and a curved line for your shoulders. Remember, this is a portrait. I'm gonna to try to do one of them um, on camera and then I'll do the other. I'll put it down on my lap. It's sort of hard to draw when you're doing it like this, holding it, because you need a steady surface. So there's my one shoulder. And then I'm gonna come over here and just round the next shoulder. Again, this is an easy project. There's not a lot of detail that you have to do. Your drawing skills don't have to be super, super excellent. And remember, art too is what you make it. It's fun. These are gonna be your pajamas, right? So you're gonna be designing some Christmas pajamas in just a minute. Now, when we're doing this art project, it's like the page, they were nestled all snug in their beds dreaming. So your eyes are gonna be closed 
We're not going to even see your eyeballs. You're sleeping, not peeking. So you're going to be drawing your eyes closed. So we're going to be, it's going to look like almost like a smile face. And we're going to draw two of our eyelid because we're sleeping. So I'm going to draw one. I'm going to be up close to my forehead. Because if you think about your eyes, they're up, you've got your forehead, right? And then you've got your eyes, nose, and mouth. So I'm going to give myself two closed eyelids. Now when you're sleeping, your eyelashes are resting on your cheeks. So I'm going to give myself some eyelashes. You're just going to kind of like, you know, whisk and fluff. Those are kind of long, but I've got my pencil. I'm going to erase the length of those just a smidge. That's the great thing about a pencil. You do something, and then I'm going to come in between and just tighten up those whiskey. Um, see the difference when I kind of fill in. And you have a lot of eyelash hairs. Go look in the mirror and look at how your eyelashes all whisk together. It's like a little broom. It's cute. We don't appreciate some of our body parts. So there's your eyelashes. And then I'm not the best nose drawer, but I've got some examples. I'm going to show you some different noses, but I always lend myself to the noodle nose. To me, it's just super easy. In fact, I noodled that just a little too noodle. I'm going to erase it and make it just a little bit. Noodle nose. And let me show you some of my uh, noses that I've done before. Here's my noodle. I did do a side nose, so that could be a rounded triangle. You don't want it to be pointed because then it will look like a witch's nose. I've even modeled for my students. This, this is a funny because the hair is not on yet, but you can see that's a front on nose. If you're doing your nose, the nostrils go out and then you kind of kind of wiggle up in because that's really what you're, if you're looking straight on, that's really what your nose looks like. But if you're not that skilled, not that confident in drawing your nose, you could play around with different noses. I just love, love to go for the noodle. That's easy for me. Now, when you're sleeping, you're not smiling. Hopefully, yeah, if you're sleeping, your mouth might be going, or, you know, it might even be on the side. So over the years, I've done different models of different mouths. So that one's not really open that much. Close. This one's kind of open, hanging over. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm kind of snoring a little. So over the years, I've told my students, you know, think about how your mouth might, how you want your mouth to, to be shaped. These are all models that I've done over the years. They're so cute. Mouth is open. Here's another baldy. So you have to decide, I think I'm gonna go with uh, a model similar to this one. It's kind of uh, a slightly opened, so I'm gonna kinda go, this is gonna be like the top lip. And you can add lips if you want, or you, know, you can just make it a simple mouth. Again, it's your art. I'll be filling the inside with a peachy pink, and then I'll go over, because if you look at your lips, they have um, nice blood flow in them, so they're pink, and they're not a hot pink, but they are a life-giving pink, so we'll be putting some color to our face in just a minute. There's your face, your sleeping face. Now, pajamas are really fun. I'm going to give myself a collar. Now, some of my models have... Christmas pajamas that I started for us because I always will start my students out with the model and we'll work together. Oh, this one has eyebrows. Before we go on to pajamas, yeah, I've got eyebrows. Sometimes I forget ears and eyebrows when I'm doing my drawing. So eyebrows are going to be the same shape as your eyelashes, but they're going to be above and they're going to arch up. So I'm going to go with a an arch up and you know, your eyebrows are kind of fuzzy, so when we add our crayon and we add our color, 
I'm going to show you these in just a second. We'll kind of plump those up. So I just simply went here and kind of arched up. And then we'll add some color. Should I add some ears? Even though my hair might be covering, I, I don't know why I always forget the ears. And my students will say, Miss Davis, you forgot the ears. Okay. Sort of look a little elfish. All right. The hair, we're hopefully ready now. Let's do pajamas. So over the years, I've done some different pajamas. Good thing I was looking at my models from years past. Candy canes. I've got little buttons. Hey, if you don't love Christmas pajamas, I always told my students I did smiley faces. You can do... Um, you could do Christmas pajamas, or you could do, let me look, grab on the floor here and see if I've got any other pajamas. You could just do, um, this one's got candy canes, that's cute. The other one has candy canes too. I must like candy. This one has hearts. So say you don't love Christmas pajamas, but you want just any kind of fun pajamas, rainbows, uh, race cars, a favorite cartoon character. So they don't have to be Christmassy. But since it is Christmas, you know, you might want to do some reindeer, get really creative. I'm going to put a couple buttons. And then you're just going to fill in that space with whatever your pajamas are going to have on them. If they're going to have like little candy canes or they're going to have like a Christmas tree shape. You know, you just draw those in. Always draw in pencil because we're going to come back in just a minute and we're going to be filling in the colors. All right, so next step after you do all of your drawing is we're gonna be coloring our facial parts because we're not white ghosts. So whatever your skin color, this matches you, this is you dreaming. So you're gonna want to be thinking about your skin color and your hair color. So I'm gonna use a little bit of I'm just going to spread my crayons out here. I'm going to use a little bit of brown um, for my, some light brown for my, I'm going to start with my uh, eyebrows. Oh, before I do my eyebrows, let me do my skin color because I think if I go ahead and put my skin color, I'm going to be washing all over my face and just going all over my face. I love this multicultural box of crayons because it's got all kinds of really cool skin colors. It can match everybody in the world. Let me see if I can find a peachy peach here. Okay, let me try this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over my face and my neck here with a peach color. And the cool thing about when you are uh, doing your face color, you could just go right lightly, be light. You know, you don't want to wash out what you just drew, but you can just go right over. And remember with, with coloring skills, you want to, you want to stay light in the same direction. You don't want to go scribble, scribble one way and then go another way. And some of your pencil will kind of bleed through too with your crayon and move and travel. That's fine. Don't worry about that. So I'm just going to slow down when I'm getting up here to this part. It's a little smaller. So I slow down my strokes, but I'm going to stay in the same direction. If you have, over the years I've used this manila drawing paper. If you have this, it's actually easier to get a... Um, you definitely don't look so white and that's, it's easier to fill in if you have using different colors. Now I'm going to kind of press a little so my peach crayon and my skin color will show up. And that's really cool too. There we go. I love it. Now I'm going to go through and start filling in my hair parts my eyebrows and eyelashes. I'm going to use a brown. So again, if you have light, you have to might have to look in the mirror for this one. That's okay too. So I'm just going through now and I'm just going to kind of uh, kind of give my eyebrows maybe a little fuzzy texture. Not too much. 
So I'm going to outline them and fuzz them up just a little bit. It's kind of sideways drawing on my part. Whoa, I need an eyebrow trim on that one. <laughs> I love art. It's fun. So, so fun. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to do some brown eyelashes. I'm going to go ahead and lightly, sort of lightly trace my lid here with brown. And then I'm just going to come through with the crayon. It's a wispy broom. So you're just going to wisp up. I told you this one was really an easy, fun one. This is one you can do with the whole family. Little children can do this. Grandmas and grandpas can do this. Everyone can make a little dreaming art. It's fun. Now I'm going to give my lips a little bit of pinkness. I don't want them to be hot pink, right? But I do sort of want them to be full of life and even inside my mouth. Okay, I'm going to give just pinkify it just a little bit, right? Now, when I'm doing my pajamas, I've got to think, you know, what are going to be my pajama colors? I'm not going to spend a long time doing my pajamas for you in front of you. Here's a model. So you're going to want to add your designs in first. So remember I drew in candy cane, Christmas tree, and then I would go over those. So I'll just go over the, the Christmas tree. Before I fill in the white spaces that are the pajamas, whatever pajama color you want, I would do the little mini designs first and fill those in. You want to get those looking really, really strong and bright and popping out before you fill in the space. And I'm just going to do a little bit of this so you get the idea of how you're going to, you're going to have to drive your little, you're going to have to be like Santa and drive your sleigh around things and not crash into things on this part of it. So if I have my, I'm just going to put a few designs for you, and then I'm going to show you how to fill in your pajamas in it a way that doesn't, going fast, that doesn't run over top of your design. So just say I wanted my pajamas to be red because it's Christmas, right? Red's a dark color. So first of all, I would probably trace my collar. I might leave my collar white. That would be nice. And then I'll trace my shoulders to match my to match my pajamas. I'm not going to trace up here because that's my chin and this is open because I have a collar here. I have a rounded collar. So when you're coloring, decide if I, you're going to go this way or this way. I think I'm going to go up and down. And then I'm just going to travel in and around those spaces. I want to take my time. I don't have a lot to color, but what I color, I want it to be excellent. I want to do a really good job. See how I'm just kind of dancing around with my crayon when I get to a narrow spot. Let me hold that up so you can see that. I'm gonna go very slow and gentle like that. And I'm not gonna go over top of it and wash it out. I wanna go around it. Okay. So once you get all of that, those details filled in, we can't have a bald person. I'm not bald, you're not bald. I'm going to show you a little trick of the yarn. I'm not going to actually do the whole thing for you. I'll just put on a couple pieces to show you, but you're going to be selecting your yarn color for hair. You can put different colors of yarn in there. If you have different, you can see I have some dark and light, so I can do that. So you're going to be wanting, this is where your scissors and your glue come in. So you're going to be thinking about uh, if your hair is long or if it's short, and then, and this might be where you have an adult help you, you're going to cut some strands, 
And usually I do this part for my kids, my students. I just get a big blob of yarn. It's really fun because I just run around and cut. Give them a, I give them a haircut and we just pull out the color that they want and then they trim it up. They, they fix it. So I'm going to show you um, how to glue the hair on. I've got lots of models where the hair is already glued on. Um, so you've got you've got the top of your head, so you, you're going to want to go all the way around, and each side has to be equal. This is where your glue is going to come in handy. So you're going to need white glue for this for sure. I'm going to put this up just so you can see. We're going to be putting glue. I have to kind of look and show you at the same time. And I'm just going to be putting a lot of glue. This gets kind of messy. Your hands are going to get gluey. Just rub it off. Don't need to worry about it. Don't go wash every time you get glue on your fingers. It's okay. Glue dries. Now, I'm going to sit this right here just so you can see. That's where I'm going to start. And then I'm going to shape it around my the top of my head. That way I can... And whoops, oh no, I fell down. <laughs> now I don't just have one strand of hair, I have multiple layers of hair. So I'm going to want to add more glue. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some more glue for you to see. And then I'm going to go around. At the end of this hair journey, you know, and I always tell my kids at the end of the hair journey, you're going to add layer, layer, layer. If you have bangs, you're going to want to put some bangs. I have some models with bangs, but you're going to definitely want to give yourself a haircut, which is very, very fun. The kids love doing it. Here's my scissors. At the end, when you get all your hair on, you want it to be the same length. So you're going to want to give yourself a haircut so that the hair is pretty much the same length. You just have to kind of vision it out and layer it up. Let me show you some other models of completed hair. Some of my people are bald, but I do have hair on some. This was a, I did a little boy model for my students to show the boys how you could do very short hair, but you can see how it's layered around. You would put glue on your forehead and again, you're just snipping and clipping. Again, this is multicolored. Um, here's another um, boy model where I was showing them how you could make bangs. Um, that one's bald. Can't see that one. She's so cute. Her hair looks good. This one was the start of hair. And I love this one because it's very layered. You want there to be a lot of layers of hair. You've got a lot of hair. So that, will sh that shows up really, really nice. And the hair part is really fun. So you don't definitely don't want to skip that. But if you don't have any yarn at your house right now, you can go ahead and get started. You could do your dreaming art. I mean, if you don't have any yarn and you just want to draw your hair on, you could do that. I mean, that's an option too. I love the texture of the yarn. It makes it really feel a lot like hair. And it looks great when you're displaying it. You're going to want to display this at your house. I always put it out in the hall um, for uh, all the school to see. And the kids love seeing themselves too. Okay, final thing you're going to do, because this is a dream that you're having, and you're going to want to, um, if you have some pink paper, I like the pink because it's kind of dreamy and cloudy. And I have a, another little tracer. You don't have to use a tracer for this. I think you could probably draw this one out. It's like a cloud, but if you could create a stencil for this, you would put this on and then you would trace that. Um, cloud shape. I'm going to go just go ahead and trace one and show you. This is where the black marker is going to come in handy because you're going to want your writing that you write because we are sleeping, but we have to know what you're dreaming about too. So I'm going to come up around here with my black marker just so that pops out. So make sort of a cloud shape. 
a dreaming shape. And then, see that little, there's a little, um, sort of a little point. That's going to be pointing at your head when it's all said and done. I'm going to show you one that I did a couple years ago. I was dreaming of a special toothbrush called the Sonicare. So you would cut out your dream and then you put it by the top of your head. This says, I am dreaming of a Sonicare electric, electric toothbrush. So you're gonna share in your dream bubble what you're dreaming of and draw a little mini picture. Again, not many details of what you need to do. So just dream, are you dreaming of a stuffed animal? Are you dreaming of a video game? Are you dreaming of something big like an iPad? or a TV, or a puppy, or some candy. What are you dreaming of? You can put it in your bubble. You're gonna start at the top. I, you're gonna capitalize your I, because it's you, special you. And you're gonna space, am, be thoughtful on this one. Dreaming, if you don't know how to spell dreaming, then ask a family member to help you. Dream plus ing, that's what you're doing. When you add that ing, you're dreaming of, and then this part is whatever you're dreaming of. You're filling in your dream. We're all different. We all have something special we want for Christmas. You may want a lot of different things, but in this dream bubble art, I would definitely put my very best and favorite thing. One year, I'll share a fun story. One year, I put, I am dreaming of a diamond, sparkling diamond ring. That was my Christmas dream, and I did it for the kids. And then after Christmas, when we got back in the new year, one of my students had something on my desk. It was a little package. I opened it, and it was the cutest little, it wasn't a real diamond. It was just a pretend one. And he wrote me a note. It said, I know you're dreaming of a sparkly ring. So I got you one for Christmas, Mrs. Davis. That was sweet. So it's always good to share your dreams. They might really come true. Now I want you to work on your dreaming art. You can do it with your family members. Remember the steps. You're going to trace your circle. Draw yourself sleeping. Don't forget your eyebrows like I did on that one. Your mouth is going to be, you could do several different models. This is a portrait, so you only need your shoulders. What kind of pajamas are you going to create? Well, I know you're going to have fun. Don't forget step two, what you're dreaming of. Put the two together into one really fun and cool art project. I'm dreaming of. A lot of things for Christmas. And you know, your dreams just might come true. All right, kids, until our next time together, get those art skills out, get them going. This is a great family project. It's really fun and super easy. You know, I love easy. You can do this one. All right, as always, stay on the nice list, and I'll see you next time.